So we're going to be talking about Altiplace for stroke of unknown time of onset. And I picked a paper that I felt like um, really summarized all the evidence into one nice thing. And this was a systematic review and meta-analysis. Uh, it took four randomized clinical trials and it looked at IVTPA versus standard of care or placebo. Now, what I don't want to focus on during this talk is I don't want to focus on the TPA versus no TPA debate. What I want to focus on is the plus that you see at the bottom of the slide, unknown time of onset and advanced imaging. That's really what I want to focus on because I suspect this is where we're headed if we're not already there in the management of patients with stroke. Now, these four randomized clinical trials, their primary outcome that they were looking at was a good neurologic outcome, which they defined as a modified ranking score of zero to two. So maybe you had some mild deficits, but you're still able to do all your activities of daily living um, and you could care for yourself and basically function as a, a normal human being in society. So what were the four trials? So the biggest of the four was wake up by far and away was the biggest, but just to give you an idea, we're talking about 800 patients in wake up. Now it was stopped early, unfortunately, and it published its results. And shortly after wake up published its results, the remaining three studies also stopped early because of the results of wake up. The authors felt like there was a loss of equipoise. And we'll talk about what that means when you stop a trial early, because this is a huge problem when we're trying to understand what the results of these studies are. Now, the other thing I want to mention here is that I have this in red at the bottom left, but the THAWS trial was 0 0.6 milligrams per kilogram um, dosing of their TPA. The other three studies were looking at 0 0.9 milligrams per kilogram. So we'll, we'll come back to that in just a second. So what were the critical results? So the critical results. So I already talked about what the primary outcome was. It was looking at this good neurologic outcome, modified ranking score of zero to two at 90 days. They also looked at death at 90 days, and they also looked at symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage. Here's what they ended up finding when you used advanced imaging and whether you got TPA versus standard of care or placebo, you can see that functional outcome was actually improved with the use of advanced imaging. Now, obviously, um, we're still going to see more death and we're going to see more symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage. These are known side effects of giving patients Altiplace. Um, but you can see that those numbers are not insignificant. 6% uh, versus 3% is a double twofold increase in death at 90 days. And symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage, also we see a threefold increase, less than 1% versus 3%. So the four trials, what do they kind of tell us? Well, the, I told you already they were all terminated early. And this is a big problem when you're looking at trials, because when trials are terminated early, we get this um, basically lack of regression to the mean. And what I mean by that is that if you do something enough times, you kind of get this kind of coming back to a more median level. And when you stop it early, sometimes the results can be over amplified. And so that's hard to say when you have four randomized clinical trials all stopped early with small numbers. The second thing is, is that there was only one trial that used this lower dosing, which I find fascinating. This was actually done out of Japan um, and they used 0.6 milligrams per kilogram. And unfortunately there were so few patients, we can't make any conclusions about this lower dosing. And then the final thing is, is that I'm finding this to be a problem out in the community is that advanced imaging is not readily available at everywhere. Maybe some stroke centers have this and are able to do this pretty rapidly. But when I'm working at some of the freestanding emergency departments or some of the smaller ERs, this is not something that I have available to me. And I still have to make the decision of whether I'm going to give TPA or not. So in the end, there's three key messages I want you guys to take away from this talk. The first message is that the current tools that we use for stroke care are blunt instruments. I, I think they're antiquated and archaic, although that's what we use in most systems. And so what do I mean by that? I mean, calculating an NIHSS score and using a CT, CTA strategy, that helps for looking for large vessel occlusions, but much like 
Tarlin was talking about earlier with anatomic versus functional study, that's exactly what this is. It's an anatomic study. It tells us nothing about the function of the brain tissue. All it tells us is that there's an occlusion and where that occlusion is located. I believe advanced neuroimaging is going to be the future of stroke care. And in some places, this may actually be the current present. And here's why. So I'm going to create a false dichotomy. And I'm going to create two extremes here. There's obviously everything that can happen in the middle. But on one side, you have somebody who has a small infarct core and a large penumbra, large ischemic penumbra. Well, this is somebody that may benefit from getting something like TPA, which is not a benign medication. Whereas somebody who has a large infarct core and a small penumbra, well, they probably are going to have very minimal benefit. And so maybe this is somebody we withhold TPA from. And then we have everything in the middle. I think that this advanced imaging allows us to do a couple of things. So let's say we go into the less than four and a half hour window. Well, maybe somebody who's got this large infarct core, like I said, they don't get the TPA. And somebody who's got a larger ischemic penumbra after shared decision-making, maybe this is something that they would want. But additionally, with the ad, uh, advancement of perfusion-based imaging, we can see that even at greater than four and a half hours out to 24 hours, this same conversation may actually be feasible. And what I'm getting at basically for message number two is that with advanced imaging, time is no longer brain. It changes the focus from getting more patients TPA to improving outcomes based on functional anatomy of the brain, as opposed to just anatomic vessels that are occluded. Now, the final message I want to give here is that it's not all roses. Do we focus on disability or do we focus on death? Stroke care, unfortunately, is not black and white. I created a false dichotomy. The reality is, is there's this huge spectrum. And the one thing they did find is that in the patients who got TPA, although they were more likely to die, um, they were less likely to be bedridden. Whereas the ones who didn't get TPA um, were more likely to be alive, but more bedridden. And I don't know what's more important. And I suspect this is going to be an individualized conversation with our patients. So no TPA, you see more disability. With TPA, you see more death. Um, it'd be interesting to see what people's take is on this in terms of, I don't have an awesome answer for you other than I talk to my patients and I talk to the families about what their wishes are and determining whether I should or should not give TPA. What I can tell you about advanced imaging is that we have four randomized clinical trials, although all stopped early. And by definition, this is level 1A evidence that advanced imaging can help guide us in determining who to give IV TPA to in patients with acute ischemic stroke at least out to 24 hours. Now, whether this is something that uh, we're going to be doing more of, whether we're going to be seeing more of this, I think we already have that answer. I think we're already getting there. So I'm happy to answer any questions you guys put in the chat. Um, and basically that's what I have for you. Alta place for stroke of unknown time of onset. And I, like I said, I do think this is the future and where we're headed with this.